Hello, welcome to Matrix Live, season 2, episode 12. Um, and we could be quick because I'm running out of time. Uh, so I will start with Riot Web, uh, if that's okay. Yep, go for it. Uh, we've been having a bunch of uh, release candidates for uh, 0.14 all week. The final one is due today. And um, hopefully... So it should go live over the weekend mm -hmm. and people can test it on slash staging, but not quite yet. Give us a minute. Yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have slash app updated next week. Uh, we will also be fixing slash app uh, to ensure that uh, people who are testing the release candidates um, don't have implosions because there is some end-to-end -end, uh, encryption uh, compatibility problems here. Yeah, so basically we don't want people who test staging over the weekend to lose access to slash app. Um, so we're trying to make the existing slash app um, happy so they can test without fear of destroying everything. Uh, but basically the um, progress has been lots of polish based on the feedback of the release candidates. And um, for next release and 0.14, we're working on sticker packs. They've been reviewed and uh, should be ready. Uh, that should be a short uh, time frame before 0.14. 15. 15. Uh, and we also have exciting stuff on the design side of things. Yeah, we've got our first um, batch of designs um, coming through um, from Yoni, um, the designer who's been uh, working um, away on totally uh, rethinking how Riot Web looks. Um, we don't have final stuff at all. In fact, we've only got very initial stuff. Um, and uh, I think what we'll do is to do a proper blog post once it's a little bit more developed. But until then, we can take Amadine's laptop and quickly flash a hint of where things might be going in the future. Um, that's just one of about six or seven totally different color schemes and designs and ideas, um, but um, probably one that might be closest towards where we're going in the hmm. future. Very exciting. Yeah, that's um, that's fun. So uh, yeah, watch this space. Uh, we'll be providing updates soon. Should I go and talk Synapse Dendro? Yeah. So backend stuff, we've basically been totally sideswiped all week by clearing up the mess from last week, some operational dramas. Um, but uh, this is pretty much done now. Um, if folks are saying, well, we've ended up basically entirely migrating our front end infrastructure over to Cloudflare. Um, which isn't ideal um, in some ways in terms of um, being a big centralized um, service. But under the circumstances, we really didn't have much choice. Um, if folks see problems, especially on sluggishness or weird Cloudflare 500 error pages, which are very pretty, um, but also seem to appear more often than we would hope, um, then please tell us um, what you're seeing there. Um, that said, there's been a bit of progress on my side on lazy loading room memberships, and I was writing some side tests for it. Um, performance has still um, definitely improved from where we were at before on Synapse with the work that landed just before all hell broke loose, um, but Freenode is still falling about behind a bit. Um, that said, there may be a major breakthrough on the horizon on performance, we're not sure yet, but um, Eric came to me, um, I think just after we recorded last week's episode in the office, and said, oh, I've been thinking about state resolution and how it might be possible to cache um, prior state resolution results in such a way that um, it basically scales roughly um, O1 rather than ON with the number of people in the room. So at the moment, if uh, you get a new event coming into Matrix HQ that um, causes a conflict with your view of Matrix HQ, uh, it spikes a huge amount of RAM to go and re go through every event ever in the state or all of the state ever to try to work out what the correct answer should be. But if we can go and cache kind of intermediary results um, and memoize the whole thing, then we might be able to have an enormous breakthrough both on CPU and memory and speed, full stop, for doing state resolution, which is the really the only thing that Synapse does that takes masses of resources today. So no promises, uh, we need to work on it, and obviously we've been, it's already delayed a week, um, but hopefully we might get somewhere on it in the near future. And that should also benefit Dendrite too. Um, on Dendrite, it's um, been community work um, going on whilst we've been stuck in Ops Hill. Mm, yeah. Uh, on the mobile side of things, uh, still trying to resolve the notification problems on Android. 
Looks um, as if the end might be in sight there. We just saw yeah. a big Google Doc that the guys in Kren have um, put together. Basically, I was about to say desiccating, but that's not the right word in English. Desiccating? Are they yeah, it's drying out? Desiccé in French. I don't know how you translate that. So um, like you, when you take a frog... Dissecting. Cast, dis dissecting, thank you. Yeah, dissecting <laughs> the problem in enormous detail, looking at how all the other apps are doing it at the moment and how we got into this mess with the stuck notifications on Android 8. Hopefully the end is in sight there. Sorry that it's taken us so long to sort it out. Yep, uh, they've also started implementing stickers so that not only you can use them on web, but you can also see them on mobile at least. And uh, there have been some problems with 3D Touch on iOS and uh, trying to solve that as well. So uh, yeah, basically the state of the art there. Um... Finally, um, I guess on spec stuff, we still haven't got back to event formats and dot, well, no, URI um, um, spec discussions. I'm afraid the, again, the, um, we basically had all of that side of things destroyed by operational stuff this week. Um, and also us going and generally doing new back to corporate stuff. But, um, uh, probably the other interesting thing to talk about on spec stuff is that I went to the IETF um, 101 meeting, and doesn't mean IETF for dummies, it means um, the 101st ever IETF meeting, um, which was luckily in London this time, um, and went over there a couple of times this week, and I had some really interesting chat with the messaging um, layer, or message layer security, um, BOF as they call it, birds of a feather, basically a bunch of people who are interested in forming a working group. Um, I went and gave a lightning talk on Matrix that was quite well received and had some interesting conversations off the back of it with folks at Cisco and um, Symantec and um, Komodo and all sorts, uh, which was really interesting to meet those folks. On the MLS side of things, it's really, really interesting because it's basically trying to fix the scalability issues that plague any double ratchet based system where you end up having to maintain a full mesh of one-to-one -one channels. Now in Megon we're relatively smart and we reuse those channels um, for going and sharing um, key data across the members of the room but it's still you still hit the point that when somebody joins a room they are going to have to go and establish however many channels to however many devices. And I'm sure that many of us will have tried to talk in Megon test on Matrix, which has got about 2,000 devices. Turns out that doing analytic and curved Diffie-Hellman exchange, especially without good primitives, can take a good three, 400 milliseconds. So if you've got 1,000 people in a room and it takes 300 milliseconds every time, it's only going to spend 30, 40 seconds before you can even send a message. So basically, this is the problem that MLS tries to fix, and it does so using a very funky primitive called ART, which are advanced ratchet trees invented by um, Facebook, I think John Medican, and uh, Catril Cohn Gordon um, from the Facebook camp. And the idea is that rather than um, doing a kind of ON exchange of Diffie-Hellman keys um, to keep these channels open. Instead, everybody shares um, ratchet state that is calculated as a Diffie-Hellman tree, a binary tree, where you basically have, um, let me try to get this right, pairs of devices um, who um, have done a Diffie-Hellman against one another, and then you do a Diffie-Hellman against the next level and the next level until you reach the root key. And it means that you basically do log n Diffie-Hellman exchanges rather than order n Diffie-Hellman exchanges. So it speeds it up all by a factor of a log. So what would have previously taken roughly a thousand operations now takes um, uh, three on average. Log 10 of a thousand is three. Yes. Um, yes. Something like that. So um, it's good news in terms of the efficiency and it's a breakthrough on the sleep room where the signal double ratchet stuff has been historically. The catch is that the architecture that they've used at the moment assumes that you have a centralized server which is atomically maintaining the root key of this um, um, art data structure which is fundamentally a problem for Matrix where obviously we do not have a centralized server so you've got a whole bunch of servers which need to keep in state uh, in sync even 
And I guess our big interest in MLS is A, trying to understand it, and B, trying to participate whilst this is still in flux to try to make damn sure that it works in a decentralized environment. Because weirdly enough, Google, Facebook, Wire, and the others who are pushing it forwards um, don't really have matrix as use cases as a priority. Um, but the good news is that the folks are very smart and sharp and welcoming, and we had a good time chatting with them. Um, there was a comedy Game of Thrones moment where everybody in the Birds of a Feather meeting, there were probably two, three hundred people there, I guess, um, stood up one by one to pledge allegiance um, to the standard and basically say, if this exists, we will support it. And so you ended up with 10 people in a row. I think it was like Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, us, XMPP, um, Wire, um, DKG's um, mail app, uh, not much, uh, mail.org, um, Nadim um, from CryptoCat, and I'm uh, Cisco, of course, and I'm missing one other. Basically, all stood up um, to say, hey, this thing um, kicks ass, and did I mention Google? Uh, maybe, I don't remember. Might have been Microsoft, actually. I can't <laughs> remember. Basically, one of the, uh, oh, another of the big guys, um, and I don't know, Komodo. Actually, I think possibly, yeah, it was Komodo. Um, uh, pledged um, allegiance to this thing, um, assuming that obviously it's fit for purpose. But it really is looking kind of exciting. They're doing a formal methods um, evaluation of it using Tamarind, which is a funky formal proof system. And if it works, it should revolutionize everything, assuming that we can make it work in a decentralized mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. Quite how the hell we're going to work on this, I have no idea, because we're obviously horribly behind on end-to-end -end encryption for Megon, mm -hmm. let alone MLS. But then again, the schedule for MLS says that it will only be hit an RFC probably um, September 2019 at the earliest. Yeah. So this is very much a next gen um, of crypto um, for Matrix. Yeah. And um, usually progress in that kind of environment is a bit slower than yep. when you do it, one does it by itself, by oneself. That said, there was a lot of enthusiasm in the room and a lot of smart people who want to move it forward. So it might um, carry along on track, um, you never know. Um, I had a lot of good chat um, with Richard Barnes, who is one of the main leaders on it, um, who is more famous for working on TLS. And it's kind of interesting that the model they're looking at is very analogous to SSL and TLS. That just like you have TLS as a universal one-to-one -one encrypted transport layer, um, the idea here is that MLS will just be the same thing for end-to-end -end encrypted group chats, and it will just be part of the internet, uh, a library probably provided by OpenSSL um, that you can go and plug in if you want to do encrypted group chat. What it doesn't do is handle the application layer, the matrix bit, or the XMPP bit, or the Facebook, or the WhatsApp bit, um, which is good news for us but it does provide an interchangeable primitive so that in the end you have a hope of federating between um, these systems which will otherwise be talking completely different dialects of the Signal double right shit like uh, we do today, which is why Signal and Matrix and Wire and Facebook and Messenger and Allo and everybody else who uses the double right shit can just not communicate today. So sorry for the impromptu crypto lecture. Um, but it's interesting times to live in, and we're going to somehow try to find a way to participate whilst making sure that my home works. Yep. We're going to have some time. Cool. Um, yeah. But I think we also run out of things to talk about. True. Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.